Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Monday Night Travel with Rick Steves Europe. I'm Lisa Friend, and I'm delighted to be your host this evening on our first ever Monday Night Travel cooking show. We're going to be showing, showcasing cooking in Italy, culture in Italy, and we really appreciate any questions that you can throw at us tonight because this is going to be casual and conversational. I don't know about you, but I've never done a cooking show before, but it has been my dream for a long time. So I'm happy that you're here with us tonight. So please let me welcome our guest, Sorrentine native, Paola Raya. Paola, come on out. Salve, buonasera a tutti. Ciao, Lisa. Due baci. Come stai? I'm fantastic, thank you. And you? Very good, thank you. Thank you for having me tonight. <laughs> My pleasure. Welcome. Okay, so welcome. People should maybe be curious where we're at. We are in one of our buildings here in Edmonds, Washington. This is not our house, uh, my house or Paula's house, but tonight it's our house. So I would welcome her with a glass of wine. Oh, Paola, yes, yes, please. Some Thank wine? you, Lisa. Grazie. Prego. <laughs> so tonight we are drinking a Valpolicella. This yes, is please. a wine from the Veneto region. So Venice is the capital of the Veneto. Yes. Thank you. This always makes cooking go easier. Oh, it does. <laughs> you Thank know, you. You're very welcome. You know, all of my friends think I'm a great cook because for years, started when I was in my 20s, for years I would have them over and I'd cook and I'd cook and I'd make them wait until like nine o'clock for dinner. I'd feed them wine the entire time. They'd be a little bit tipsy and they'd be so hungry that anything I put in front of them, delicious. It's delicious. Yes, that's the trick to do it. Beh? Salute. Salute. <laughs> Salute. This is one of my favorite Ooh. wines. One of the themes tonight is the hot summer. These are dishes that you would easily make in the summer because they require little cooking. They're not going to heat up your house with an oven. I know that a lot of us have been suffering from the heat this summer, including some of our friends down in New Orleans. So I just want to say uh, this is a great menu for hot weather. Yes, I agree. It's nice, refreshing. In summer in Italy, we have it you know, often, um, so very easy to make and simple ingredients and healthy. So we are gonna be doing this like if we were making at home, so we're gonna be multitasking. Um, so the first thing we wanna do that's gonna take the longest is our sauce for our gnocchi alla sorrentina. Yes. We're gonna have a full explanation about that. But Paola said, Lisa, you're gonna make the sauce. So I'm gonna show you, I made it already because it needed to be sitting here. Yes, so <clears throat> gnocchi alla sorrentina, it's a typical dish uh, from the Campania region. If you had the chance to visit Naples, Sorrento, you've probably seen it in our menus in the restaurants, and it's very appealing to all ages and has very simple and tasty ingredients. So, so to make the sauce, your favorite olive oil, extra virgin, <laughs> then a clove of garlic, Yes. or two or three, up to you. Can't have too much garlic. I like to break it a little bit and then throw it in, but just, just a little bit, maybe break it in half. And then one can of San Marzano tomatoes. This is important. San Marzano, they're from Naples. Yes, they are, yes, from the Campania region. Yes. And they grow particularly well. So Naples is famous all over Italy for its tomatoes because... Of the beautiful weather that we have and the sun and the Mediterranean breeze. <laughs> and the volcanic soil. Of course, it's very fertile. Matter of fact, we have, we have also very good wine. Oh, okay. Well, we need to talk about that yes. later. Okay. <laughs> so one can of San Marzano whole peeled tomatoes. And if you have kids or grandkids, it's fun to open this up and you want to completely crush them in your hand and drop it in your pot. It feels fantastic. Kids love this. I did this with my daughter earlier today. So one can of crushed San Marzano yes. tomatoes, and then about four or five leaves of basil, just torn. Mm -hmm. um, tearing basil is always a good idea instead of cutting it because the steel will affect the the steel of the knife will affect the basil, especially if you're trying to make a pesto or something. And then you want to have this sitting on low heat, like I said, for about 30 minutes. So yes, that yeah. is working. Yes. And you know, the longer the, the sauce 
stays on a very gentle temperature, the better because it will absorb all the delicious flavors of the garlic, of the basil, the olive oil. So the longer, the better. Okay. So then just like as if we were at home, we're going to start on our second dish. So this will be a good time to talk about um, the dishes very briefly. I got ahead of myself. So our first dish is going to be prosciutto e melone. Prosciutto crudo. Prosciutto crudo e melone. Why is that important, Paola? Because in Italy, we have two types of prosciutto. We have prosciutto cotto, which is the cooked ham, um, which you find often, of, of course, in your sandwiches in panini, con mozzarella, salame. And we also have prosciutto crudo, which is the cured ham. And we use prosciutto crudo e melone so that we can taste the contrast flavor of the saltiness of the prosciutto crudo and the sweet of the melon, melone. Perfect. So you would find that even though we're going to be using um, ham from Parma, prosciutto from Parma, which is the best one to use, um, you would find that you're going to see that all over Italy, menus everywhere. So that's going to be our starter. And then our second dish is going to be panzanella. Panzanella from Tuscany, my favorite recipe, um, because as I said um, to my friends earlier, in the olden times, Tuscans learned to make bread without salt because salt was highly taxed. But when you make bread without salt, you also end up making bread without flavor. So there is a plethora of dishes in Tuscany that use stale leftover bread. And panzanella, the bread salad, is my favorite. Yes, very good. It is very good. And but it's I'm going to make the one from Tuscany. This is a no recipe recipe. All of the things that we're doing, you can adjust to your own taste as you like. But when I talked about making panzanella, Paul said, yes, well, panzanella, again, each household in Italy are more than free to add their variant um, ingredients to their salad. So in my household, um, in Naples, in Sorrento, we would add tuna to the panzanella salad. Actually, it's Napolitan salad, which is a similar um, uh, type of salad. And then we would have the breads uh, soaked in water. Uh, you could add toma cherry tomatoes, olives, capers, you know, you can feel free to add whichever are your favorite ingredients, but I think the key is to have delicious tomatoes, a good olive oil, salt, basil, and anything else. Yes, so, but no tuna or capers no tuna tonight. 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 <laughs> That's uh, for a different show. But we're gonna make panzanella and then we will be making the gnocchi alla sorrentina. We'll be making the gnocchi dough from scratch. We will use a little TV magic, um, but we'll make the gnocchi alla sorrentina with the sauce that we've already started. And then we'll show you everything at the end and we'll be able to- Yes, to, <laughs> to enjoy some. <laughs> so um, the other thing that's gonna take a little, bit of, a little bit of time is the tomatoes. So I didn't grow up doing this, but um, the Italians salt their tomatoes. Yes, we do. Um, and again, the same idea with the sauce, the longest it stays covered uh, with a cloth on top, the better it would absorb the, the flavor. Matter of fact, when you do bruschetta, for example, when you prepare the, prepare the tomatoes, you would chop the tomatoes, you would have your oil, your salt, your garlic, oregano, and you would just let it sit. The longest, the better. It could be 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, the longest, the better. Okay, okay. I'm start you with that one. So we're gonna just slice our tomatoes. We have a bunch of heirloom tomatoes. If you had garden tomatoes, any tomatoes would work. Um, even even in the depths of winter, when you have kind of not great tomatoes, salting them will bring out a lot. So yes, we're gonna start just by cutting our tomatoes into bite-sized pieces for our salad. And while we're doing that, we would like to say. Um, Italians always eat things in courses. There's an order to their meal. What would be the first course? What would the first course be called, Paola? Il primo piatto. It's the first uh, course of the meal. Um, so usually primo, primo piatto, it's a warm dish. Uh, it can consist of pasta mainly, uh, but it can also be a soup, a risotto. Uh, so that's the primo piatto in the order of the entree. Of course, before that, if you're in a restaurant, you would order an antipasto too. Um, but we have the primo piatto and then the secondo piatto, uh, which- Will you translate those? Oh, yes. 
Primo piatto, first dish. Secondo piatto, secondo is the second dish. It will be made out of protein. So it could be um, fish with accompanied with uh, veggies or salad. It could be meat. Uh, basically, the, a lighter um, food to accompany the first, the primo piatto. And then, of course, you will have the, the third. Il dolce with uh, um, il liquore a digestive, un digestivo, and then il caffè, coffee. What would the digestivo be like? Well, digestivo in my region, we drink il finocchietto, for oh, example. Oh, yeah, finocchietto. Vero? You see, <laughs> il finocchietto is made out of fennel. It's very good for your for your digestion, especially if you had a very intense um, meal course. Um, it's lovely to have your digestivo. If you're with family of your friends, it's just another way to stay together, sit at the table and keep having a nice conversation and chat. You know why it's important to sit longer at the table? Why? Because <laughs> of the Italian saying that no one ever ages at the table? It's very true. <laughs> it's very true. Especially those Sundays, you know, that you're invited over to your friends or to your family. Um, you see, Italians, our love is food. Do so, you mind if I give you that job? No, it's okay. very good. Okay. <laughs> See, food is love. There, I love food you so much. Love. Mm -hmm. Our action of love is food. So if an Italian invites you over to their household for dinner or for lunch, uh, they would do everything to cook you amazing dishes because that's their act of love and host for you. That is true. I was once the recipient of that uh, years ago. 14 years ago, to be uh, exact, I was pregnant with my daughter and I was tour guiding around Europe. Yes. And my friend Francesca invited me over to her house in Rome. Mm -hmm. And she knew I was having some like morning sickness. Oh, issues. Yes. And so she made me the healthiest thing she could think of. And she, it was, it was a tomato sauce, but she had uh, put in carrots and what else might she have put in there? Did she put in onions? But it was, I, I didn't know that anybody un ever... Brodo, un brodino. No, 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 just just straight, just straight, oh, just what straight. we would call tomato sauce or marinara sauce. Okay, okay. Um, but she's like, oh yeah, my mom, and her mom was from Sicily. Oh, actually, her mom was from Brooklyn, but um, her dad was from Sicily. And I didn't, I'd never heard of Italians, like... Um, grinding up a carrot and putting that in the sauce. They're sneaking oh, yes, vegetables yes, in. Yes, yes, yeah, you can do that. Yes, matter of fact, the sauce La Bolognese, for example, it has some carrots too, chopped carrots with the grinded meat. Um, but, you know, in, in Italy, we have all sorts of very interesting breakfast traditions. Like, wow. for example, um, in my hometown, a delicious breakfast, a traditional breakfast from the people. It will be just a nice uh, piece of bread, some nice olive oil, some salt, some cherry tomatoes, raw garlic, and it's very healthy and tasty and delicious. It's a good morning start for sure. Here, do you mind if I put that over there? More? Our cameraman doesn't like where it's at. <laughs> but I only have one more to do, so it won't be their long zen, I promise. <laughs> Zen's the boss of us. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't know. She put the carrots in there and it was, it was, it was lovely. Yeah. Um, the other thing I learned while pregnant with my daughter in Italy is that if something's not in season, you're not going to find it. No, true. It was, I was craving watermelon and yeah. there was no, and it wasn't exactly the time. And I was, yeah. Yes. We want to buy fresh in season foods. That's why our tradition, when you go make your groceries, you go specifically to the person, which is the one that sells you the fruit. And you will ask him, you know, what is in season right now? And he will tell you this type of fruit or this cherries for summer or strawberries. And so the fruttivendolo becomes your best friend because you really trust him on the best um you know, uh, advices, suggestions of the seasonal um, fruit. Also, we have il pescivendolo, which is the person that you go buy the fish. The fish, the fish, the fish, the fish, the fish 
for the yes. fish woman, the fish person. Yes, in Machelayo, you will, got, you will buy your meats. Um, and then La Salumeria is where you will buy your hams, your cheeses, but also the last minute um, necessities. Like, let's say you forgot to buy milk or you need some more yogurt or pasta. So it's, um, it's, there, it's like a little convenience store where you, could, you can also find um, hams and cheese and have your um, sandwiches made. Okay, so we right. are just going to salt our tomato. Yep. And I just I will tell you everything where we got it tonight because yep. all of this was purchased in America. <laughs> nothing, nothing from too far away. So just some salt. Um, I'm using Himalayan sea salt. Um, just salt it generously. Mm -hmm. Give yeah. it a toss. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. And then we have it over a bowl specifically to catch those juices. So we'll just set that aside. And then now I'm going to wipe this down for you because yeah. you're my guest. But <laughs> um, now the next thing we need to do because we're trying to make this multitasking, Paula, you're going to start um, with the new yeah, the, the first, the first new yes. step after the sauce. Yes. So Gnocchi della Sorrentina, the main ingredients to make the sauce, as we previously, previously mentioned, is um, good tomato sauce, olive oil, garlic, salt, and basil. So you get that going and you keep it in the um, delicate temperature because you don't want it to be uh, to dry the sauce out So uh, for some time. And then the first thing that we do to make the gnocchi is we use potato and flour to make the actual um, gnocchi dough out of scratch. Of course, you can buy the gnocchi already made at the store <laughs> for practicality. That's a great idea too. I do that as well. But other times it's good to make actually make your own fresh gnocchi dough so you can taste the differences between you know, the ones that you will buy at the store and the ones that you make out of potato and flour. So realistically, yes, as a working mom, <laughs> yes. you're only going to make gnocchi by hand on special occasions. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's not an everyday thing. Uh, it, to be practical, some of the recipes, traditional Italian recipes, they could be simplified with more simple ingredients. For example, um, the, the pesto alla genovese, I like to do it, uh, with spinach or broccoli, ricotta. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the, the Ligurian lover in me just pick up a little bit inside. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that when you have a busy schedule, um, you know, it's okay that you simplify your recipes and, um, you follow the traditional recipes for special occasions too, you know? So it's totally acceptable. <laughs> okay. If you use homemade gnocchi or you buy them at the store. So, okay. Okay, so potatoes. Yes. So the potatoes that we will use um, to make the dough out of scratch um, are the russet potatoes and they have to be dry <laughs> the driest the better <laughs> not fresh we not normally fresh. Fresh. no fresh. no not fresh and so these are the best that they will work for this recipe to make the traditional gnocchi la sorrentina so one potato is good for one serving it depends for how many people <clears throat> you're preparing it's also good to do as much as dough as you want because then you can put it in your freezer and then you can take it out and then you have the gnocchi already good to go. So for this, for tonight, we're just gonna show you two potatoes, but you can have more than this. So two raw potatoes, russet potatoes. And we put them into cold water. Yeah, then you want to rinse the potatoes, of course. Which I did for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. After your potatoes are rinsed, then you will place them in the water, um, in the pot. And depending on the size of the potato, you know, it can take any time from 35 minutes to an hour. It really depends how big is the potato. Um, so TV magic, put yes, the potatoes in the yes, pot. Let's put it right here and then we'll let it sit there and boil. Um, the good way to know if the potato 
already is that you would insert, you know, the traditional way you would insert a knife inside the potato and then if it's easily sticks through it, then they're ready um, to, um, to come out from the boiling pot. Okay. Okay. Magic. TV magic. <laughs> After that, don't talk when you're not facing the microphone. Sorry. Sorry, people. <laughs> I want them to hear you. What you're saying is okay. important. After that, um, you would let them sit for a little bit, the, the potatoes. Obviously, very important. The potato has to have the, the skin on. You don't have to peel it before you put them in the pot. Otherwise, the potato is going to absorb too much water and it's not good if you have to make the dough. So keep the potato with the skin on. After they're done, then you can lay them you know, on your counter and let it sit for a little bit. Otherwise, you might burn yourself your hands. Um, yeah. It's like five <laughs> minutes until two minutes. minutes. The yeah. potato, they still have to be warm to walk them with the, with the flour, but... Um, not boiling because we don't want you to burn your hands neither. So yeah, I'm nervous about this. Yeah, no. <laughs> so how? So we have the potatoes bowl ready to go. Then the next step. You will smash the potatoes. Mm -hmm. With a regular potato smasher. Yes. Masher. I like smasher. That sounds more. We can actually do that. Okay, that, I'm, I'm ready. That. I have a question I need to get out. You want me to put all of them in there? Uh, um, how about we start with two? Okay. Two or ones, So that you have some room to, okay. and then we see how it goes. Yeah, or this one, whichever yeah, you I prefer. Lot, again, I, I think we've talked about my aggression. <laughs> yeah, we, um, in Italian, we call the schiaccia patate. How do you say that? In a English? potato rice. Yeah, there you go. It's probably even easier to use that. So you will put the potato in the potato riser and then shh, it comes beautifully like reverse of potato. How much? The, yeah, a little bit more. That little looks more. good. Yeah. Yeah. You can add one more potato to that. That's my reward. You did a good job, Lisa. You can put another <laughs> potato in. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to put this right here. Good working muscles, Lisa. Yes. Good exercise for your arms. <laughs> ben, how's it going in the Q&A? All right, thumbs up. Okay, how do you feel about that? That looks pretty similar to what you have. Yes, perfect. Okay, Okay. so now that you have smashed your warm potatoes, mm -hmm. now you can work with the flour. And I just you, tossed my salted tomatoes a little bit. Perfect. So I have this cook here. Um, you you need as, as little much of flour enough to have the dough not too sticky. So, and you start adding the flour gradually to the uh, mashed potato. Am I jumping my potato out now too? Just put it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Should I take my ring off? You know, yes. I usually don't like to cook with rings on it, but okay. that's me. <laughs> well, no, I don't want to either. Okay. I've never done this before. So everything, I made gnocchi once at a, at a pasticceria, did yes, I say that right? pasticceria bakery, yes. yes. Um, <laughs> years and years ago, and it was a lot of fun and I like it. Yeah. But I also, when I went to this restaurant for the first time in Florence, I thought, oh, there must be little old women wearing black, rolling it by yes. the I said, where did, Angela, where did you get this gnocchi? It's so good. And he's like, yeah, I get it down the street. <laughs> but the next day he went and took me there and translated. Okay, so I'm just. Yeah. Yeah, I'm start just, working. Okay. The, yeah, I it's, think it feels very good. <laughs> it's actually very therapeutic. <laughs> the warm of the my bash potato. I think you don't understand how much I've never done. So, am I like <laughs> folding it over? And oh, like it's bread dough. Or now you're still you're working on okay. that, you know. Okay. And then you see it's still very sticky, so we need more flour. I'm going to add more flour. You know, I have a beautiful memory of childhood of gnocchi alla sorrentina because when I grew up, 
in Sorrento. I grew up right at Marina Piccola, which is the harbor Please. in Sorrento. Where you grew up on a harbor? Yeah, it's not very usual. Wow. <laughs> Matter of fact, we were only a few families there, and most of the children that I used to play with, they were children of the of the vendors, you know, that they had restaurants or coffee shops there. Um, so it was quite an unusual upbringing, but I loved it because to me, um, it was like being in um, in a postcard, you know, really? <laughs> it's very picturesque. You grew up right next to the water with yes. the fishing boats. Yes, and... I did. Yes, yes, wow. I did. And um, the, the apartment where we used to live the first years of my childhood, it stood above a hotel and a restaurant. So every time we will have to go towards our apartment, we will have to walk by the restaurant. And the old lady all day long will sit there and prepare gnocchi alla sorrentina, shape them and make the dough. Whoa. And her husband was a pizzaiolo. Pizzaiolo is the, you know, the pizza maker. So he also will sit there and prepare the dough for the night at the restaurant. So to me, seeing, um, uh, the tradition of gnocchi alla sorrentina when you make them it just brings me back to home and and the smell you know that it will actually fly up in our balcony at night oh. it just brings me back so i think mine is still sticking. okay more more more, more. <laughs> is that all purpose flour yes ah, yes yes thank you Unbleached, it's all enriched all purpose, purpose flour. flour yes who asked that ben who's who's our baker who's our Who's making it along at home? Jimmy, Jenna, Nancy, and others. Oh, a lot of people. Okay, well, good. That's, that means that we're doing something interesting. <laughs> okay, I'm actually, because we're using TV magic, I'm just going to zip over here and I'm going to turn down the potato because we've already got the dough. Thank you for doing all of this. Oh, yeah, it's my pleasure. You know, and Gnocchi actually is a great activity to do with your with your friends or with your family members. I like to do them with my daughter sometimes, especially if you have a toddler like I do. How old is your daughter? She's four. Is she watching tonight? She is. Matter of fact, ciao, Maria Sole. Mwah! Ciao, amore. <laughs> yeah, she, it's great, you know, to get hands-on on the dough. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's tradition. It's passing through the knowledge kind of like italian grandmas or aunts mm -hmm. will have you do it so, do you have a lot of strong family memories around food i do i do um you know it's more, it's more, more. <laughs> see you you go gradually oh yeah did I put too much? No, no it's okay because no, no, i got the whole thing is i'm almost getting there touch touch, touch mine Oh, it's, it, yeah. Yeah, it's getting, yeah. Okay, just, well, you can. <laughs> here. It will happen. Don't you worry. You just have to be patient and, and work with love the dough because food absorbs your energy. So if you do it with love, with passion, it will respond nicely. Mm -hmm. So while we're working, the, yeah. somehow the motion of that is changing the fibers, the gluten, everything in there. Yeah, it's not just the process of adding the flour. It's something that we're doing do it that yes yeah but to go back to your question sorry the the family traditions memories um you know in italy it's very um it's a big tradition to get together on sundays for example and have a big family reunion meals mm -hmm. of course we will get together on the special holiday occasions but the sunday meal with family it's it's nice, especially if you have a busy life in general, it's a nice way to see each other and catch up. Not all Sunday happens, of course. You know, it's not that Italians, we meet family every Sunday, but we try. Mine doesn't mine look like yours. Because <laughs> mine has magic. <laughs> okay, that's why you're... I think I'm gonna put some more dough though. I, I feel more that. flour. Like flour, yeah. Sorry, it still feels a little bit, a little bit sticky. So I'm you just have a lot more flour on your board. Here, <laughs> here, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa. Oh, okay. Here, Lisa. Okay. Here, this might it could be the last. Oh, okay. Well, almost there. But yeah, I remember my nonna. She would make. Um, she would cook on Sundays for us. Um, um, 
my my dad originally is not from Sorrento. He's from Torre Annunziata, which is um uh, well, if you've been in Naples, <laughs> you probably know the Circumvesuviana, the train. Yeah, the train that goes right from Naples. <laughs> from Sorrento to Naples, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's along that way. You know, Vesuvio okay. is right here. It, 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 it's like a half moon. Sorrento is right here mm -hmm. and it's the Bay of Naples. So it's it's very close to Pompeii, Ercolano. Oh, okay. So this, yeah. okay, so this is a very Italian thing, Paola. Yes. You're like, well, my dad, he's not from Sorrento. He's literally from 10 miles away. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, but actually, he's not from Sorrento. <laughs> you have a good mm -hmm. point. You know, Italians were very proud in specifying il comune. Il comune is like the city town, you know, and mm -hmm. it can be literally five minutes to Sorrento, like after Sorrento is Sant'Agnello, so it's they're attached, but you have to specify that you're from Sant'Agnello, not from Sorrento. Okay. <laughs> do you still get a lot of British tourists in Sorrento? Yes, we do. Yes, yeah. Sorrento, it's um, it's always been a um, a famous place to get married. You really? Know? You know, when I was one of my first jobs when I was. Uh, still in high school the last years I would do translations for um, uh, British uh, weddings at the Al Chiostro di San Francesco so I would translate you know the civil um, weddings for oh. them yeah yeah all right what do you think okay uh, let's check tell the truth yours looks slightly different than more mine. flower more flower a little bit more <laughs> yeah. Mine too. Okay. Have you been in Sorrento, Lisa? I have been in Sorrento um, years what? ago. When I first started with the company, it was 1999. And I went on my first tour in 2000. And the first Rick Steves tour I ever went on was the best of Italy. And back then it was 20 days long. And it went all the way down to Sorrento. So, uh, yeah. And I was really... I mean, I have to say I was naive and, <laughs> and I, you know, I had this vision of Naples as just being like this kind of dirty, mm. not really great place. Mm -hmm. And the, and then I got to Sorrento and I saw the Bay of Naples and I was like, wow, it's beautiful. I really had no idea. And I said to myself, I want to come back here and I want to come back here with my husband. Mm -hmm. And we have not made that come true yet. You should go. Scott Friend, <laughs> you need to, need to get on that. Um, I also wanted to say, so anyway, so I saw it for the first time in 2000 and thought it was beautiful. Um, we have since made the Best of Italy tour a little bit shorter. It doesn't go to Sorrento, but now you can actually spend a lot of time in that area on the South Italy tour because that covers Sorrento yes. uh, and Naples. A couple of nights in Sorrento, a couple of nights in Naples. This is not a sales pitch, um, but a couple of nights. Yeah. Um, on in, the Amalfi in, Coast. In Maiori, yes. Yeah. Yes, at the Amalfi so, Coast in Maiori, and then uh, visit Pompeii, Ercolano. It's a very yeah. nice, complete yeah. itinerary. But yes, it's, um, you know, Naples, it's a very interesting city. Um, I think you either hate it or love it. I personally love it because it's an explosion of sounds, of uh, colors. It's it's like the volcano, the Vesuvio, you know, it's it's explosion. <laughs> it can be very chaotic at first, but it has beautiful, elegant side of the cities as well. Okay, so. how are we? Okay, I think this? we're good. Okay, okay. So before we start actually making the shape of the of the gnocchi, the dumpling, mm -hmm. we should also put. <clears throat> You know, at this point, you would add the water in your boil and start boiling the water because that will be the water where then you will place your gnocchi. Okay, I'm glad you're remembering. Yeah. Good. But before we do that, we, you need a cloth because gnocchi are very delicate um, and you don't want to stick them too close because otherwise they get sticky. So what you need to do yeah. as you prepare the gnocchi, you make the shape, you need a clean cloth, which mm -hmm. I'm going to put hmm, right here. Are we using we're, that dough or television magic to? No, oh, we're using that to. Are we using that to roll? We can out? use both. Okay. No. It's gonna take me twenty minutes to get all of this dough off my hand. 
Yes. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm gonna set the cloth right here. Okay. I'm gonna put this there. So what you wanna do is again take a cloth and then add some flour on top of the cloth so that the the gnocchi shape will stay uh, smooth, not too sticky. And at the same time. So just for the viewers who wonder what we're doing right now, because we are in a limited space and we've never done a cooking show before, we are using pots and pans. So now I'm making the water for the gnocchi to boil in. And what's one of the important things that we do with pasta water in Italy, Paola? Well, you know, when the, when the water is boiling, you would add the salt at the boiling stage of the water. And that helps to have the water ready saltier and to have your pasta not too sticky afterwards, uh, more al dente. You could also add salt um, before the boiling stage, meaning you add the water in the pot and then salt because salt can also bring elevate the temperature of the water so it can bring a faster boiling. It's very preferential, but usually we add the salt at the boiling stage. It was too soon for me to wash my hands, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, oh. so Lisa, let's put some flour on top of the of the cloth first. Let's sprinkle that out a little bit. Before we do that, can we do one thing? Yes. Okay, so here oh, we have Italy and I just want to point out that our wine, you have to be the wine pointer. The wine is from the Veneto region. Yes, so it's right here, Veneto. Perfect. <laughs> and our ham, our prosciutto is coming from Parma in, in Emilia Romagna. Yes, right here by the Adriatic Sea. And the panzanella is coming from Tuscany and Florence is the capital of Tuscany. Yes, right here, Tuscany. Toscana. And then our gnocchi is from Sorrento. <laughs> yes, which is right here at the at the point of this uh, extension of the coast. And in front of it, there is the island of Capri. And then you have Ischia and Procida and then Naples. Okay. <laughs> now I am putting the flour on. Yeah. This so it doesn't stick, right? Yes. So as you, I, I, I hope you guys will be here in person and feel this, but I guarantee you it's no longer sticky. Um, it's nice and soft. So that's the point that you would like to get the dough at this stage. If it still feels sticky to your hands, it's not ready yet. Okay, so you put the, the flour on top. So yeah. now what we wanna do is we're gonna cut in, uh, let's cut two batches. So you work on yours and I work on I have. We have to eat the one that I made. We can't use the nice one that the expert yeah, made. Let's use this one. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna cut this right here. Put some flour on here. Okay. And Should then I scrape this away? Yes, you, you could, yeah. Paper. Yeah, that's a good idea. I don't have, well, I have a little bit. You don't have as much as I do. Okay, there you, you go. Do. I'll scrap it. Always best to do it. Little details that then it helps you to the final finish. Ben, anything interesting going on in the Q&A? It's always interesting things. All right, yeah. fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Is there such a thing as too much salt? Thank you. No. no. <laughs> well, it depends on your blood pressure <laughs> and whatever your doctor says, but. <laughs> you need the dough in a stand mixer. Oh, that's a good question. If if you can make the dough in the in a, no, just like we did is the best way to do it. Yeah, I mean it will be convenient, but I don't know. Let me try it. We can you can buy pre-made gnocchi, then gnocchi at Trader Joe's. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Where um, have you any other places? Yeah. Yes, I mean, Trader Joe's, yes, Trader Joe's are pretty good. Uh, you can find them in any grocery store, really, uh, Costco. But you want, do you want the frozen kind? You don't want the dry kind? They, they have the dry ones imported from Italy that, you know, they're 
they're okay, but I guarantee you that after you have tried the potato-based gnocchi, you know, it will be hard to go back to those ones from the grocery store. Okay. All right. Show me what we're doing now. We're just okay, so, rolling it yeah. out. so rolling it out and then there you go. Is gluten-free flour okay? Do you think it would? Yes. Oh, you need to repeat the question. I don't know if people heard. Is gluten-free flour okay? Yes. Very, uh, that's an interesting question. So I would like to just weigh in on that a little bit, not knowing I'm anything. Just, I'm not sure how the the consistency of the dough, how it might affect, but you can try. You know, you you can make gnocchi based on so many different ingredients. You can you can make gnocchi out of made of ricotta only, no potato. You can make gnocchi like we're doing right now with egg also okay. um I, i'm just choosing the most traditional yeah. way yeah. yeah okay so now um, but 20 percent of all italians are celiac or chiliac mm -hmm. and so it's a lot of people think oh i'm gluten-free i can't go to italy because all they eat is a pasta and pizza oh it, as a tour guide i can tell you it's very easy to get gluten-free pasta in restaurants in italy yes okay yes okay so the to... the thickness it should be like about that's, this is also preferential, but usually gnocchi are about this this big and this thick. Okay. So you can use, let's say, your finger as yeah. thickness like yeah. this. Perfect. And then the size is two, three centimeters. So two finger, two so finger. So it be like half half of your. Yeah, it could be that two fin two fingers ish, one like, and a half. Like this. What is okay. it? Two inches. I have no Video. idea. <laughs> so like this kind of okay thickness we'll show them better but do we cut it with this scraper yes you can also just use a knife so you would do like this i'm gonna show you but i don't know if you can see but this is the you know perfect and this is already good to go you know you can even just stop at this stage and not necessarily have to roll it, which we'll show you shortly, but that's already gnocchi ready for you. So, okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to go with the, with the meter. Imperfection is beautiful too, as long as it's tasty, so. Okay, so we cut our gnocchi. Now, okay. we want to make the, Lisa, how do you call these rims? Uh, ridges. Ridges, thank you. <laughs> You could use either um, a gnocchi board, and they're very cheap to find. Um, I personally bought it, can I say where? I, you say. <laughs> I bought it on Amazon for like $10, so very easy to find. And they're very nice to have it handy because who knows, maybe you want to do other type of fresh pasta and you can use these shapes. Okay. If you don't have that, it's okay. You can also use a fork. So, so I'm using you, you a fork. fork. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some flour on top of here so it doesn't get sticky. You don't have to do it on the fork. Okay. This okay. is so much fun. Okay. So are you <laughs> drinking your wine? No, actually, hold on. Here we go. Sorry, that. I'm going to get the salt in there in just a minute. And I just want to remember about the boiling uh, water. Uh, gnocchi are very delicate. So you don't, when the water is boiling, it's okay if you lower the heat a little bit so okay. that the boil is gentle, not too violent, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> no violence go. against the pasta. No, get, no. Okay. Okay, so I'm Ready? putting some flour right here. So okay. what you want to do, you, you grab it with your thumb. Mm -hmm. And in this case, See, I'm putting pressure on the middle of the gnocchi with my thumb, mm -hmm. and then I'm accompanying. Oh that? my God, mine is perfect. There you go, and then you you let it roll down because I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm not, it is perfect because it should have a little seam yes. on one side and it should have the ridges which I've already mashed. Yes, um, on the other, but that was that went very See, well. I'll, I'll show you. So here has the the. The seams, there you go. And then on the bottom, it's uh, slightly closed. It's like a little channel. <laughs> yeah. And this is so that it, it traps the sauce, the, the tomato sauce. So 
All right. I'm so sure. as we easy. make them, you're going to place them in your cloth with flour right here. Sure I am. <laughs> Isn't that relaxing? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is when you make at least half of them. <laughs> I think maybe mine was, my first ones were a little bit too thin. There you go. So you just gently like let them fall. Let them be. Oh, yeah. So you, okay. Gently put them and then whoop, they fall down. And then and then they fall down <laughs> okay yours look way better than mine <laughs> you want to try with the board sure okay it all makes will make a little bit of a difference okay yes everybody buy the board <laughs> it's a lot easier <laughs> if you're gonna do this yes, it's more practical see it comes perfectly i hope you can see it from my hand but the ridge right here and then the yeah yeah okay so we're gonna just finish these up make a few of them our water is boiling so i'm gonna salt it after i whoop well yeah okay. this is the perfect boil lisa it's not too boom, bubbly you know this is the perfect uh point and i turned it down just a smidge okay all right. All right, I'll go back. What did I do with my fork? Oh, oh. right there. Okay. <laughs> yes, Lisa, go back to your fork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got the board. I'm I making personally a mix like the board. Yeah. <laughs> I just like things to be easier. Yeah, I don't blame you. So um, one of the things that we were going to talk about was I got to ask for my friends out there in TV land, why can't I drink cappuccino after 11 a.m.? <laughs> what do the Italians have against that? Because I won't do it because I don't want them to look at me bad. But, <laughs> you know, sometimes <laughs> we Italians can be very specific on few things. <laughs> and I'd say that's one of that. Um, cappuccino, it's a, a breakfast beverage. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would have it on the morning with your breakfast with um lamb with you know a toast usually italian breakfasts are very simple and easy to go um of course it depends on your household uh but it's not the typical protein eggs you know like yeah like here which i have adopted and i quite enjoy because i believe that on the morning you need a good protein to get you going um but yeah cappuccino it's nice when you have you know your cornetto you have your toast with honey nutella jam um for example the other day i tried um this breakfast that it's very well known across the mothers in italy which is la zuppetta you know what zuppetta is a little soup it, yes, it means literally little soup, but la zuppetta is um, basically uh, milk, mm -hmm. uh, warm milk with, you can have honey or sugar, and then you put the old bread, the bread that you mm -hmm. don't eat anymore, okay. yeah. you can put it in the, in the la, yeah. la zuppetta, yeah. and you know, you have a nice tasty spoon, and it's, it's good, it's so good for you, and I tried to give it to my daughter, and she didn't like it, I'm like, <laughs> oh well, okay. <laughs> So anyhow, so have you finished almost how many more do you have? Are you done? Yes, I'm done. We can so I want to show you how you would transfer. Um okay. you know, over there. So let okay. me do we wanna oh we can you put it you put all I, I put some it. other here too that yeah. we already made. Yeah. So what you want to do, you have your cloth, you have your gnocchi here. So gently you have your flour so they don't get sticky. And then <clears throat> you would pick this up like this. Okay. And then gently you would transfer without burning yourself yeah, that's... into the pot. And okay. there you go. Oh, there. All right. And then, and then should we throw all these in there too? Yes, let's do it. Okay. Can I throw these in without doing it with the towel? That's okay because there's only a few of them. Um, you want to do this. So you really want to use the towel if you can. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> yeah, somebody use the towel. You burn. <laughs> yeah. 
it's, it's ideal that you use the towel if you have a lot of gnocchi yeah. laying down here. You know, if you have okay, so you do that because we got to keep moving on to the next thing. And these gnocchi don't take long. Here, I'll let you do this. These gnocchi don't take long to cook. How many minutes, Paola? It's gnocchi is literally a few seconds. Um, gnocchi are the they're very smart. <laughs> it's a smart, uh, very smart because you know that the gnocchi is ready when they come up on the surface. So they tell you that they're ready. Perfect. Okay. You know, what better than that? So as soon as you see them coming up on the surface, you can scoop them out and oh, and then we're ready. To, okay. And then what I like to do is this is a great tip, guys. Here, Paula, I'm ready for you. Thank you. So have a bowl handy next to your sauce, which by now it will be already ready to go. Beautiful. So as you can see, some of the gnocchi are already coming up to the surface. So I will take some of the sauce warm and I will put them in this bowl right here. Because the gnocchi are so delicate, you don't want to then take them all and throw them in your, um, how do you call this? Your pan. In your pan, in your casserole. In your casserole dish. You want to take them um, gently here. Ideally, you will remove, of course, the water. And then you add them in the bowl with the sauce. And then you can gently stir them so that they start absorbing some of the sauce. And can you guys hear her? Everybody here, Paola's doing magic over there with the bowl. Okay, I'll come closer. There you go. So I'm gently stirring the sauce. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the tray right here. Oh! There we go. Okay. I'm going to put some sauce. Oh, I see garlic. Lisa, we what? need to remove the garlic from the sauce. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Otherwise, you know what? Just stick it right there. You might confuse it with a gnocchi and eat the whole thing. Oh, yeah, that would be bad. Okay, so you do a layer of sauce in the bottom of your casserole pan. Meanwhile, I'm going to take all my gnocchi here. And then I then mix them. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. I am your gnocchi student. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna add them here. I think after this, you guys are all gonna be expert in gnocchi la Argentina. And but from, you but you were saying like, you're gonna find this in all restaurants in the Naples area, Sorrento area. You're also, this is something that, like Paula said, this is simple enough that children are not going to be picky. Uh, picky, picky <laughs> eaters are going to like this, but it's interesting enough that adults would appreciate it as well. Yes. Okay. I'm here. For okay. You. Okay. So what oh, we're doing, oh, yes, ready? you want to do the first layer. So next, just chop, shred some mozzarella. Okay. And we use the mozzarella log. I, I usually buy it. The mozzarella bleeding accident. Okay. Hold on. Oh no. <laughs> I was well, not prepared for the mozzarella liquid. Um, I personally like the mozzarella that I find at Trader Joe's. <laughs> the mozzarella good. cheese log. <laughs> the mozzarella cheese log. Yeah. Uh, a good mozzarella should have an amount of liquid that comes with it. Yeah. Uh, but if you're ever doing a cooking show, please open it over a bowl. Okay. I've almost got this ready to go. So I said, do I slice it and round? He's like, no, you're just gonna crumble it. And it actually seems to come a little bit pre-sliced, Paula. Yes, it does. It okay, so but, I'm, but I'm just, I'm shredding it like this with pieces? Yeah, yeah, just across. Okay. Mm -hmm. Be generous about the mozzarella because you, the more mozzarella you have, you know, the, the knife. <laughs> Hell, I'm an American. There's no such thing as too much cheese. Don't you worry. I will shred as fast as my little fingers can go. I think we have that in common. Oh, do you think? I do you think so? 
Well, Italian love cheese. It's true. It's true. <laughs> especially the mozzarella, you know. Sometimes at dinner time, especially now in summer that is so hot, a nice mozzarella fior di latte and a little bit of prosciutto or the even the melone and prosciutto crudo would do just a nice, lovely dinner. So I and delicious. I have to say, I just spent um some time in Puglia, which is over on the eastern coast of southern Italy. Yes. With some friends in May. And man, I got really into burrata. Yes. Which is, I guess that's probably the that's probably like the arch rival of a good mozzarella. I am really shaking things up tonight, it's, friends. With it is, but you know, you're speaking to a Napolitan. So yeah, yeah. So she said, <laughs> yeah, burrata. In my case, it's mozzarella di bufala. Yeah, the buffalo mozzarella. So which... do you want to say that to people that it comes from a water buffalo? And tell me, is this enough? Yes, that's perfect. So now put some parmigiano on top. See, she says it's perfect. I add one more slice. <laughs> Yeah, mozzarella di bufala, um, it, it just, it's a unique flavor. It's a must try if you go in uh, in my region. And my fact, there's some variances of gnocchi da Torrentina that they use mozzarella di bufala instead of the fior di latte or, or normal mozzarella. So, okay, I want you to eyeball this for me. Like okay. how, how? Yeah, that's perfect, Lisa. Va benissimo. Okay. Bravissima. That's very, okay, so just... Perfect. Maybe this is about five <laughs> tablespoons. Because then the parmigiano, what it's going to create when once this is going to go to the oven, it's going to create this nice crust crunchy on the top of the of the gnocchi. So now I'm going to do the last layer. Yes, yeah, so you're layering this like a lasagna. You do two layers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Really? Okay. I mean, you could go wild and crazy and do three as many as you want, but, yeah, so but I'll like say how, it's it's enough to how make deep your how deep yeah. dishes, right? Because potato gnocchis are pretty. He I mean, they're yeah, they're made of potatoes. I mean, yes, yeah, they're sticking to your ribs. So now we add sauce again. Do you cheese? You mean cheese? First, oh, the no. sauce. The cheese goes at the at the very last, okay. so that it's gonna be nice and melting and the crust. So now I'm just gonna do the last layer. Of sauce covering this. This is perfect amount, Lisa. Good. Well, good job. I, I followed your direction, Paula. It's <laughs> one can of San Francisco <laughs> tomatoes. Not wrong for this size. Perfect. <laughs> one pound, twelve ounces, so twenty-eight ounces. You know, I usually cook by our our cure. You know, by <laughs> <laughs> I don't follow the the specific specific sizes, but this is perfect measure. Okay. okay. So now you put more much. I can. Okay, so I'm coming the last with more mozzarella, the last layer. Okay, and it's still torn, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what would be a special occasion dish that you would, an Italian, any Italian, so let's not just keep it to Campania, but an Italian's going out for a special dinner. What are they? What are they? That's a very good question. You know, um, I'd say it depends on it depends on the region. Like, mm -hmm. for example, in my region, when we like out for dinner, um, we like to eat a lot of spaghetti or linguine alle vongole, mm -hmm. which is uh, spaghetti or linguine with seafood, clams, mm -hmm. uh, delicious, or also risotto e gamberetti. You will go for for dishes that maybe you wouldn't necessarily cook at home, or maybe that you just go oh. for it, you know, like, oh, I, I would try to go for gnocchi la sorrentina when mm -hmm. I go. But um, we also have, um, for example, um, gnocchi with uh, shrimps, gamberetti, e provola, provola cheese. There's all sorts of fancy I, dishes. That I you thought can you were not allowed to put cheese <laughs> with your seafood in Italy. Well, there is some exception, so um, some combinations are good, but you know, that might sound very normal, but mm -hmm. Italians enjoy their pizza too, especially Napolitans. We go out to the restaurant and hey, let's go have a pizza together, so. Okay, so do another, do more parmesan. Parmigiano on top, yes. And this is also from Trader Joe's. Yes. And this is grated Parmigiano Reggiano, which comes from Emilia-Romagna, just like our ham. Um, Emilia-Romagna is 
definitely known for being the best eating area. Yes. I mean, yes. You know, even Italians yes. are going to say, well, yeah, my home, my home region is the best. But if I had to go somewhere else. Yes. Le Pappardelle, you know, are from Bologna. I, I had the pleasure to go to Bologna last year with my husband and my daughter. We have some family that they live there. And I have to say, people from Emilia Romagna are fantastic, are very lively, are very wonderful, warm people. And sure, they love their Pappardelle and also La Piadina Romagna. Maniola, which is um, a type of wrap with uh, prosciutto crudo inside, the, the, the cheese, you know, they put a rucola, there's different variation, but that's kind of like a street food, but it's very delicious. They have fantastic food in Emilia Romagna too. I say everywhere in Italy for this bed. Yes. Can't go wrong. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put this in a 400 degree oven yes. for 10, we're going to check it, it at 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah, you can keep it for 15 minutes. Um, you will check it at 10 minutes. It's, again, preferential, but the idea is that it comes out nice and hot and crusty. So. I would say as an American, because I can feel this, this is hot. Everything in here is cooked. You're really melting the cheese. So you want to have your heat high enough that it'll get through the casserole and get to the middle. But I might be tempted to throw it under the broiler. If I pull it out at 10 or 15 minutes, and it's the cheese is melted, but it doesn't have a crust on it. I might throw it under the broiler for a few minutes yes. because that's how I am. So yeah, exactly. In the and, oven, and, whoop, and you know, Lisa, at this point of time, after that, you have made your gnocchi out of scratch. You have prepared your sauce. You can also stop at this stage too, you know, with the first layer of gnocchi. You just eat them after they're done with tomato sauce, parmigiano, basilico, and you're good to go. So you can also stop at the first stage. But if you want to eat the traditional gnocchi alla sorrentina, they will have to go in the oven and they will have to be in layers. Yeah. Would you like some more wine? Uh, sì, grazie, per favore. Okay, so we, grazie, we have done the gnocchi alla sorrentina. Yes, yeah. baking. Perfect. But we're not finished with the rest of our food, so we gotta keep keep going, keep going. So Lisa, you have me working too. I know. Well, you get to take a break because the panzanella is my thing. So my panzanella is I made these breadcrumbs. I used a this is a country French loaf from Costco. So I use one whole loaf and I cut it into cubes. And I drizzled it with olive oil and I toasted it in a 250 degree oven for about 15 minutes, really just drying it out. So you can hear that it's, these are nice crusty um, things. So I've got that going and we're gonna start, I'm gonna put that there. So we're gonna start by putting our salad together. Oh, that crispy, crispy crunch. And we are going to TV magic some diced onions. So we've got about, I it was a really big red onion. So we're using about half of it. And I like onion. So we've got that. And then we've got our tomatoes that has been, that have been draining. Mm -hmm. And they look gorgeous. And they've given mm -hmm. us a little bit. I'm going to just stir it to get some more of that juice. Very good. Mm. Out of the bottom. Heirloom tomatoes. Oh, just beautiful colors. God, I'm glad I brought a big bowl. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even think I'm going to. No. It looks very good. Yeah, okay. I'm, throwing them I'm getting hungry now. It's, they smell amazing, too, by the way. Okay. Yes. All right, so... This is quintessential Lisa Friend cooking right here. I am famous for not having dishes that are big enough. So the last thing we need to do, we're gonna we're gonna leave that tomato juice there, and then we're gonna help you chop. You're gonna help me chop. You still have your knife? I do. Okay, so we're just. I already peeled these. We're just gonna dice okay. these, cut up and and dice them. And then what, so do you, how do you want them in cube? You do you do bite size, size, however okay. you want to do it. I won't even cut a cucumber the same way twice. So what else can we talk about? Um, ben, are there any questions from the Q&A you'd like us to answer while we're doing this? Or 
The other thing I just wanted to mention is you were talking to me about um, about your friends back home and the influence that the internet has had over how people, at least people of your set, um, are cooking in Italy. The globalization it's of food. True. You told me. It's true. You know, now with Instagram, all these food influencers, um, you know, we we like to explore um, different type of recipes. Like earlier, I mentioned the the festo with broccoli and um, spinach. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is coming from the traditional festo genovese. You can do this alternative, you know, with spinach. I I personally do it with in the mixer blender. I do I boil the spinach just enough that it still has some texture. Then I put it in the blender. I add ricotta, some uh, walnuts, um, garlic, um, salt, olive oil, parmigiano, and you mix it and you have a delicious pesto, healthy, especially because my daughter, she can be picky sometimes with vegetables, so you have to get very creative. And this influencer, Instagram foods, you know, they've been very helpful for moms to get ideas on you know different things to cook and that okay. how you introduce vegetables to a peaky daughter like mine you know well do the pesto same with the broccoli or the beets i do the beets too it's very lovely um same thing ricotta walnuts olive oil parmigiano salt um blender of course the beets will have to be cooked <laughs> and it takes some time to cook them but it's worth it it's a nice um texture flavor to it Okay, so all of our ingredients are in our panzanella, except the dressing. Now this, for this dressing, I am pulling out my favorite olive oil. So it comes in a very small can. It was sent to me by a lovely woman in Tuscany. You want to use a Tuscan olive oil for this because Tuscan olive oil is generally the, the pepperiest. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important. And this you would use your best olive oil for because you're really going to taste it. So... I'm just putting a whole bunch of olive oil in here with my tomato sauce and then red wine vinegar. You can use white wine vinegar. You can use yes. um, balsamic vinegar. Yes. I feel like Americans really, really like balsamic That's vinegar, but yes. it's not as, it's not as ubiquitous in Italy. Yes. So True. I like that red wine vinegar taste. Very good. The smell smells very good. And then... Where's your tuna, Lisa? No tuna. <laughs> no tuna. Olives? No, no olives. Well, it's I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not against an olive. But, <laughs> okay. Um, this is just the ears. I'm not going to put any salt in yet. Um, I'm just going to give this a stir. And I'm going to... Ooh, do we have a small spoon anywhere? Oh, I'll find it for you. Okay. I'm just kidding. I don't know if you can see it. It looks like Italian. It looks like what we all grew up with as Italian dressing. A small or big spoon? Just any size. There you go. Perfect. I just want to. How do you say spoon in Italian? Cucchiaio. No, <laughs> Bravissima. How do you say knife? You know, that's a tough one. No, I know how to say taglio. Taglio. Like... Taglio. Taglio is the cut. Yes. Yeah. Taglio. I can't remember how to say knife. Coltello. Oh, cool. okay. So that word makes me think of another word that I'm not going to say right now, um, but it makes me think of maples yes. and its superstitions. Ah, yes. Oh, yeah. No, this can be very humorous and superstitious. Yes. But I say Italian in general. We have our own superstitions. Some regions maybe more than others, and they're specific to their culture and tradition, but um, in Naples, we have this thing, the horns, you know, so <laughs> I'm going to show you the horn you show <laughs> horns down. It means keep the bad luck, bad energy. Technically are the horns of the devil, you know, put the down facing the, the, the grounds so that you keep the bad luck away. Um, you know, it's all tradition that it's mixed with paganism and anyhow, um, very folkloristic. Um, but we also have <laughs> keep talking because I've got too much stuff like to like your cucumbers. I cannot, to I cannot toss my salad. So you know we have the usual, like uh, you know, and I think some are here too. Um, like you don't you don't walk be, uh, underneath the ladder. 
No. Why would no. you walk under No, the first of all, it could be dangerous. You don't know what might fall in your head, but when it holds down, you don't want to do that. <laughs> or you don't open the umbrella inside your home, specifically, or inside the inside place. You know, God forbid. People break that in our travel center every week because we sell a travel umbrella and they'll like pop it open. I'm like, no, I close the umbrella. <laughs> Yes, no, we have a lot of different um, superstitions around. Um, didn't you hear one funny about scratching? Okay, well, <laughs> I learned from a Neapolitan man that if a hearse walked by, you would stand and cover your important bits. Um, and then you said, no, no, they're not covering them. They're scratching them. And that's also why you scratch your chest. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's, so you, know, you have to tell. It's like grattatina. You find una grattatina. Grattata is scratch. Grattatina is little scratch. So more likely you will do a little scratch. Again, it's just a superstitious thing that you would, it's like, you know, knocking wood. You keep the bad energy away, the misfortune away from your life. So okay, all right. So we have a little bit of salad that didn't make it in, and we have yep. this salad. Now, when you're doing this at home, you want to let this salad sit for another 15 minutes. So that will give us the time to yes. uh, make our prosciutto e meloni, yes. which will be the easiest thing that you've ever seen. Oh yes, outside and delicious, of course. So. Put that there. Oh, the cleanup is going to be fantastic. Okay, <laughs> so your job is to open okay. this okay. package. I can do that. Di Palma. Yes. You know, now that we're talking about Emilia Romagna, I just can't think of getting out from my mind the song. You know when you have a song sticking in your in your brain? An, you ear, an earworm? And mine is I 44 Gatti. You know what 44, 44 Gatti are? 44 Cats? Yes. <laughs> it's a famous, well, it, it, it was a famous song for children in the Zucchino, Zucchino Doro. Zucchino Doro, they still do it, I think, but it started... You know, at the times of my grandma, <laughs> it's a traditional uh, competition of singing for children. And um, it started the, the, from this, this um, music instructor from Emilia Romagna. She will have her children and sing along and write the songs. But anyhow, okay. 44 Gatti means 44 cats. And it's a cartoon now, which is produced in Bologna. And the song is... Le tagliatelle di nonna Pina. <laughs> Talking about pappardelle tagliatelle di Emilia Romagna, it's in the song. So, really? nonna Pina is grandma Pina. Anyhow, oh. I just had stuck that song in my oh, head. Oh, no. Oh, I just really made a big mess of it. Okay. Tagliatelle di nonna Pina. You know what they sing whenever I come by? What? What's my name? Isa. Mm hmm. What song do they sing? Everybody sings when I come by. Maybe you maybe you're too young. Maybe I'm too young. <laughs> Lisa Dalioki Blue. Oh. All the hoteliers, all the, it's always men too, which I really, <laughs> I really do appreciate. Um, yeah, Lisa with the blue eyes. And then I have to say, I do not have blue eyes, I have hazel eyes. So this is <laughs> you guys, this is the very difficult technical aspect <laughs> yeah. of taking prosciutto. <laughs> So out of thing. Not, look, I did it this time without ripping it. I'm so, I'm so proud. <laughs> this then, is so good. And you know, Lisa, the best way to eat this is that you would have also the, the sliced melon in the fridge. Yes, this be, should be cold. Yes, it should be colder so that it's colder, it's refreshing, you know. Mm -hmm. So I my tip of advice is that you would have this cold a little bit, you know, in your fridge yeah. before you wrap the, the prosciutto around. So we're almost, I think we're almost done. We only have how many more slices? So this is the, so melone in Italian. Melon. Mel, this is cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Say yes. This is cantaloupe. Yes. So this is cantaloupe wrapped with prosciutto from Parma. Prosciutto crudo. Prosciutto crudo. You so, wouldn't do this with cotto. No, that's I wouldn't even try. Yeah. <laughs> that's not right. That's not. And we're sure. just wrapping Perfect. it for fun. That's it. That's how you would see it. And you would see an appetizer like this looking better, but in a restaurant, this would cost you, depending upon where you are, you know, nine, 10 euro. 
maybe a little bit more now. So we're gonna so pre so antipasto, the first course. Mm, yes, prosciutto grudo melone. Mm. Panzanella. And, and this is also this would also be technically an antipasto. Hey, we mean salata. Insalata. We mean salata. You know, I mean salata. I can accompany a protein from secondo piatto. You can even just eat it as is by okay. itself. You know, it's plenty. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> so antipasto, insalata, salad, and then our primo piatto. Yes, gnocchi alla sorrentina with the oh, nice oh. crust of the parmigiano, the cheese, nice and boiling. <laughs> and, our, them out. and our Valpolicella and from the Veneto. Yes. And voila, we, we cooked dinner. <laughs> it was amazing, so much fun. I hope the people that were watching us, they also had fun along with us. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I hope so too. Ben, we have time for two questions before we dig into this. Mm. <laughs> what does gnocchi mean? Gnocchi dumplings. Would it be an option to bake the potatoes instead of boil them? For the Would it be an option to, to bake, bake the potatoes, potatoes instead of That's boil a good them? Uh, hmm. I think if you bake them, it'll probably. I'm assuming, I'm guessing here, because I don't have a correct answer because it's always been boiled. But I wonder if the texture of the potato when you do the... I think it might dry it out. It might dry it much. out a little too bit. Much. And it's true that we talked that the potato with the skin has to be dry, but when it comes to the smashing, it also has to feel some a little bit smooth. So you, you could try, of course, you know, there's nothing wrong in experimenting. Yeah, yeah. This is nice of cooking. You experiment and if it works, you, you adopt that version. If not, then you boil, so. Are you, and the last question. Last yes. question from Ben. Are you going to share this lovely meal with Zen and I? Oh, do <laughs> Ben and Zen get to get in on this? Absolutely. So a word from our sponsor. My friends, I told you that I, you all about. I told you that I went to Puglia earlier this year and I took along our Rick Steves Italy for Food Lovers book, uh, co-authored by Fred Plotkin. It was fantastic. We we actually, this is not the one we took. We actually ripped it out and we were there were four of us. We'd read it in the car on the way to our next destination, and we knew what we wanted to see on the menu before we even got there. And as a self-declared foodie, I thought it was a really important tool, and I was really happy that I brought it along. So I would like to invite Ben and Zen up yes. and say thank you all yes. for joining us. If you liked it, please let us know. You have a last chance to do the survey for July. And um, if you want to see more of this, let us know. If you thought this was super boring, well, you probably left already. So thanks for sticking around. Yeah. Recipes, yeah. Tomorrow. recipes tomorrow in the follow-up email from yes. Zoom. Although you don't need a recipe, you can make it as to your taste and preference. Thank you to Paolo. Oh, for thank you, here. Lisa. Grazie. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, buona serata. Oh, have a good evening. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>